Hey you guys! So spring is starting to finally be in the air a little bit around here. I don't know about you, but I've heard some of you guys have some daffodils coming out and some flowers blooming and it's almost 50 degrees here in Chicago so it's really fun to start thinking spring and I snatched up the first spring paper that I saw online um, on twopeasinabucket.com but I'm sure you can find it in other places too but I used this paper by We Are Memory Keepers called Cottontail and it's it's cute it's pastel-y it's polka dotty it's Easter-y so it's fun to work with but if you've already got some Easter paper that's gonna be awesome too or just anything pastel and pretty and also something cool that you can do is put your own spin on the Easter basket like let's say you were gonna make it for a little boy who loves soccer or something. If you had soccer paper, you could use some little soccer patterns here and there, make it like green and black or something cool like that. But obviously I made mine in traditional pastel Easter colors and patterns. And this is actually not that hard to put together at all. I'm gonna show you how that works. I've got all my pieces cut out. And the cool thing is that no matter what mat size you're working with, you can make this, even if you're on as small of a mat as like 12 by 6. So that is pretty awesome. It's really fun to fill up. It's nice and sturdy. And you can have fun being like, hey, I made this myself. And you can also make a card that coordinates perfectly because you can use the same coordinating paper. So you've got two options here for cute Easter card designs. and. Both of these work on any size mat except for um, the envelopes which are too big to fit on a 12 by 6 mat. But you can also mix and match up the little bunny guy and the, the chick and the egg shaped cards. So you've also got some elements to work with on whatever kind of paper project you can dream up. Then finally we've got two really simple boxes that you can whip up like really quickly at the last minute. This box here is just all one piece and it's really quick to put together because you just cut it out, you glue it together, and then these little yellow parts here are just some accents that are optional. But this clear plastic that you see here, I, I don't know what kind of different options there are in craft stores and scrapbook stores, but I like to just go out to the office supply store and get myself some page protectors because I know they're going to be there in pretty much every office supply store, and I just cut them apart and I use them for when I have a clear opening in the top of a box. It works really well. Then finally we've got our super cute little carrot box and this is also just one piece and it goes together really quickly. I'm going to show you how that works here in just a minute and then you can just have fun embellishing it with a bunch of green ribbons. I just grabbed like three different cool green ribbons that I had and I just threw them on there and it looks really fun and I'm totally loving it. So I've got all my pieces ready to go. Let's sit down and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the easiest pieces first. And the carrot here is super easy. As you can see, it comes out really cute. And all you've got to do is glue this tab here around like this. And then you're going to glue each little triangle here, you're going to glue closed, all five of them. So glue all five closed like this. And then it's going to be left with these diamond shapes in the middle, which you just use to put your, your ribbon around to close it up like this. So before you put your fun ribbon on here, you want to take your five green accent pieces and glue those on all five sides of your carrot. Then go ahead and have fun using some wild and crazy green ribbons. Next, let's do this other easy box called the One Piece Egg Box here. It's got this cute little egg shape to cut out of the top. And the first thing we're going to do is wrap this piece around here and put some glue on just this tab right here and we're going to hold that in place while it dries a little bit. You can be a little more precise with your glue than I just was but mine works just fine too like that. 
And then we're going to go ahead and put glue on all of these tabs down here. And then we will just place the bottom part in place on top of all these tabs here. And just make a nice even, a thin even coating all the way out to the corners for the best, for the best results to make sure it's nice and finished nicely. Mine is not as perfect as yours will be because because I'm holding it up in the air, it's a little awkward. But just go ahead and put one at a time in place. And make sure they're lined up real nice. If you want to take your time even more, you could do one at a time. Just put glue on one and put it in place, then put glue on the next one, and, and so on. But this way is a little quicker. It works too. Whatever works for you. Okay, so the bottom is in place. And as you can see, the, the bottom part there is showing some tabs a little bit. If you want to go ahead and put your bottom liner in place, just put glue on the back side and then curve it a little bit to get it to fit down in there and then glue that down there. It just gives it a little more of a finished look. Okay, so next, I'm gonna take my clear plastic, which you can barely see here, and like it says in your directions, I just cut it by hand, I just kinda eyeballed it to about, I forget what it says in the directions, but about you know three inches tall or so. And it's by no means a perfect oval or a perfect circle, but that doesn't matter because it's gonna be covered up by other paper. So just put that in place. And I'm not sure about other glues, but this Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive definitely affixes the clear plastic to the paper. So if you're having trouble with your glue, if it's a different kind of glue, you might have to get some of this Scotch stuff to make that work better. And they sell that at, at every craft store that I've ever been to. So then you're gonna take your, your top liner and you're gonna put glue on the back side of it and put it right here in the middle to cover up and finish off that on the inside. Then you're gonna take these little tiny little triangles one at a time and just put a tiny dot of glue and smooth it out to the corners of the triangle and just fold it around and hold it in place while it dries. You want to make sure it gets a good hold because it is so tiny but it's it still works. So just go ahead and do that all the way around to the other little tiny triangles. And then when your top is all assembled you can go ahead and put your accent pieces on like I did here. Mine are yellow on this one and then I also put some fun ribbon with a bow um, and a button here on the front. So that's what these two little little dots are for. The two little holes you can put a ribbon through there or in your extras folder if you would rather not have the the holes you can find a, a bonus SVG there without the holes. Okay so let's move on to our Easter basket here and I've already got the main part of it here cut out and I have folded up each one of these little pieces here from the bottom and as you can see there is one piece here with a hole in it and on the opposite side there's also a piece there with a hole in it and you want to line that up with the little hole that's in this rectangular shaped piece here there's there's two of them and they're called rim.svg and that's where your bread is eventually going to go but not yet so first just go ahead and put glue on this piece here and we're just going to work our way around gluing each one to the other side of this long rectangular piece here. And the reason that they're shaped like this on the top is so that these pieces are evenly spaced apart. So it's nice and precise. So go ahead and glue the next one right next to it with no space in between. And just keep working your way down the line gluing all of them in a row all the way down. So I went ahead and glued all of my little tabs all the way down the side and then I took my other side and I did the same exact thing on the other side. So I've got two halves here and now on both sides I'm just going to 
put a line of glue on this thin little piece here and I'm just going to put that in place and hold that while it dries since it's such a small space that's being held together. And we're going to add some more reinforcements to that so don't worry about that. And go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Just one line of glue on that thin piece. And just hold that in place while it dries. Now let's just take a moment to put the handle together so that we can put it on with the brads. And as you can see, it is three layers thick and it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna glue all three layers on top of each other. But the one little tip that I have about this is that while you're, after you put your glue on, while the glue is still drying, you wanna take it and just kinda of curve it a little bit to get it curving while the glue's drying. Because if you let it dry flat and then you curve it, it might kind of like crackle a little bit or not be curved nicely. So go ahead and glue those three together and just curve them while they're drying. I've got my handle here all curved and ready to go. So I'm just going to take any kind of coordinating brad. I've got a nice little pink one from my stash. And just jam it on in there and get it in position and do that on the other side. And then next we're going to cover up the inside with some reinforcements to hide all those tabs and make it a little stronger and to hide our brads. So now you can take your two pieces that are in the interior shape and mine are white because this paper is not double sided, it's just white on the other side. So I cut my interior pieces out in white and I'm going to go ahead and glue them around inside, right inside here. So just put a nice thin layer of glue around on the inside and position those two pieces so that they cover up this whole interior part. Now finally, as part of your interior SVG shape, you've got two circles here and one of them is a little bit smaller than the other one as you can see if you hold them up together and the smaller one just gets glued on the inside of the bottom of the basket and the larger one just gets glued to the bottom of the basket. So that just makes it a little bit stronger on the bottom. Now finally we've got our six pieces here that are the weavers and in case you get mixed up with which one is which, they are numbered where it's going to be hidden here on the end and you probably can't see this but I can see a tiny little one here that's been cut by my machine. So that's a one, this is a three, and here's a two. So there's two of each. We got the two there, and the one, and the three. So I've got my two threes here, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on this tab here, and I'm gonna glue the three to the other three. Doesn't matter which one gets glued to which one because they are identical. The two threes are identical um, to each other. So go ahead and glue the end to the other one there. And just make sure that the corner lines up with the little corner there and this other corner lines up with the other corner. Hold that while it dries and now you've got a nice big long piece here. So that is going to go on the very bottom of your basket. But first let's just go ahead and get all of them ready. So do the same thing to the two twos and then do the same thing to the two ones. So just hold that while it dries and again just make sure that the corner of this one piece is lined up with this little corner of the tab as best you can. That way it's, most, uh, it's the most perfectly aligned as possible. So finally just do that to your, your other pieces here, to your two ones and then we should end up with three long curved pieces. So just line up the corners and let that dry. So I've got my three piece here which is the shortest and it's going to go on the bottom of the basket because the bottom is a little bit smaller than the top. So let's start underneath the handle approximately, it doesn't have to be perfect, and just 
start making your way through these pieces here, just going up and down all the way around. And you, you want your piece to be curved like it's like a rainbow. It's not going to be, you don't want it curved like it's a U. So mine is curved like a rainbow here. And I'm just going to make my way all the way around. And when we get, when it starts to get kind of hard to pull it, I can just flip around and I can work with the other end to make things a little easier. And just be careful not to, to tear any of these thin little pieces while you're working with it. Okay, so we've got both sides here. And now this needs to go under. Okay, so we just want to glue like we did before. Glue this, put some glue on this tab here. And we're just going to hold it in place while it dries. And it's going to end up being pushed all the way down to the bottom of the space that it's in. But the other pieces will, will help us do that. So just let that dry. And as you can see, it fits just along the bottom just perfectly. So that was number three. Now let's find number two, which is this piece here. In case you're wondering, there's a backwards two that's cut into here. There's a, a regular two here. It's hard to see, but you can see if you look closely. So I've got my two piece. Let's start again underneath the handle. And this time I want to go the opposite way. So I, I want to go underneath where it was previously over here. So, so go the alternate way that you did before. And just do the same exact thing, working your way around. And when it starts to get hard to pull through, you can use the other end of your weaver. Starting to meet here on the other side. And just go ahead and close that one up the same way with a nice thin little layer of glue. Close it up, hold it while it dries, and we're going to push it down to make room for the final weaver, which is number one. And again, just go ahead and push it, push it all down to make room for your final piece, which you will, again, just do the same thing and make sure that you go the opposite way from your last one. So this time I'm going underneath and then over and, and so on. And with my thumb here, I'm just, I'm pushing down on these two pieces here to make space for this top one because there's exactly enough space for it. It's a little bit of a tighter squeeze than it was for the first two, but it'll still work. Just push down to make room and go ahead and push your piece through. So I've been working my way around and it's starting to get a little harder to pull it through because there's just so much friction here. So go ahead and swap around to the other side. And this final piece needs just a little bit more time and patience than the first two pieces did, but it will still work. Just go ahead and kind of pull apart these two pieces here to make room for it as you go. And just be patient and just weave it through. And actually, it for this just for this video when I cut this out, I did the same paper on the rim as I did for the weavers, and it definitely looks better if you use a different paper for the rim, I think. Just a tip. So just keep working your way around, same as before. And when we get to the other side, we will just close it up like we did before. And I did a pretty good job of lining up my seams here. Here's one seam, here's another seam, here's another seam. My paper is so busy that you really can't see them anyway. But if you feel like 
yours are more visible than mine and you want yours to be more finished, then you can go ahead and kind of twist them around to try to make the seams line up, but I'm not really too worried about it. So there we go, there's our basket, and you can definitely have fun filling it up with some grass and some goodies. And I think it looks really cute to take some fun ribbon, like this American Crafts floral ribbon that I got at Archivers, and take a hot glue gun and put that around the outside, or some other kind of ribbon, or really whatever you can think of. So there you go, there you have it. The Easter basket would also look really cool with a nice big bow tied on the side. So have fun with it, share pictures with us, and most of all, happy crafting and happy spring and happy Easter.